Hi everyone, welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia. I'm coming to you from Seattle, Washington, where I live with my husband and our dog. Uh, and I do all the crafty things and talk about them here on the channel. So welcome. <laughs> Uh, and happy 2022. It is a new year, uh, an opportunity for a new beginning. Uh, it's really exciting. So this is my end of the year extravaganza video. So wrapping up 2021. Um, yeah, so we're going to go through some numbers, um, totals of what I created, um, so knitting, uh, spinning, weaving, that kind of thing, uh, and have photographs. So we'll go through some of the pictures of the things that I've created, and then we'll look ahead to 2022. So my plans for this year, um, goals, ideas, that kind of thing. So this is, a, uh, you know, celebrating the end of a year and the beginning of a new one. So before I begin, I should talk about what I'm wearing because I am wearing a hand knit today. This is my campsite cardigan, uh, which is a pattern by Alicia Plummer. And it is knit out of some yarn that I spun. Uh, some Coopworth wool and I just love this cardigan <laughs> so I'm wearing that today uh, otherwise we've got the heat cranked up in the house a little bit today so I'm not wearing a lot of hand knits <laughs> but I could be it's totally snowy outside <laughs> so let's talk about what I was able to create in the year 2021. I have a notebook here with notes of my my totals. Uh, and something that I like to do in my end of the year episode is compare uh, with the previous year. So I'm talking about 2021, but I will do a little bit of comparison to 2020. Just I like to see from year to year what's going on. So in 2021, um, so what I do is I track my projects on Ravelry and I keep track of, that's where I store photographs of the projects, uh, the yarn I use, the yardage, uh, the dates. Sometimes I don't always get the dates exactly correct, uh, but I, you know, try to estimate when I started and when I finished. And so objects that are counting for the year 2021 are items that were finished in 2021. So I may have started them in a previous year, uh, but if I finish them in 2021, they count for 2021, if that makes sense. Um, and these are things that could be knitting, crocheting, weaving. Um, I lump those things together and then I put spinning in a different category. Um, spinning generates yarn, generates yardage. Knitting, crocheting, weaving, use up yardage. So I've got projects that create yarn and then projects that use up yarn, right? <laughs> so, in 2021, I finished 31 projects that use up yarn. So knitting, crocheting, or weaving, okay? 31, that's pretty good. Um, considering the previous year, I finished 25 projects. So I did increase that a little bit, which is fun. The total yardage for 2021 of the yardage that I tracked. So here's my caveat. I did not track yardage for every single project. Um, there are some things that I just forgot or they were little projects that I, I didn't feel like tracking the yardage was important or worthwhile. So out of the projects that were large and substantial and things I wanted to keep track of yardage on, 
I finished or I used up 13,643 yards um, in my knitting, crocheting, and weaving. Yeah, a lot. Uh, which compared to 2020 is about 1,500 yards more. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, in this past year, 2021, I finished, so of those 31 projects, 12 of them were socks. So uh, there have been previous years where I've planned out, hey, I want to knit a pair of socks each month and have 12 at the end of the year, and then it didn't work out. This year I had no plans for that, and guess what, I got 12 socks. So what is that about? Uh, but let me put in a photograph here of the 12 socks that I created in 2021. Uh, they are in no particular order. <laughs> uh, just I made the collage in a visually appealing way. Uh, but yeah, those are the 12 socks that I knit this year or finished this year. Um, maybe one of them is carried over from 2020. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so 12 socks, that's real good. Um, next, uh, our blankets. So I finished seven blankets this year, and one of them definitely is a carryover from when I lived in Texas, which we moved here in 2019. So um, there was a lingering blanket project that I did finish this year that has been carried over a couple of years. Um, so yeah, seven blankets, uh, six of which were baby blankets and one adult size blanket. So the adult size blanket is um, like a cozy memory blanket uh, with the squares, uh, miter corner squares. And <laughs> um, I, decided to make it a twin size blanket. Um, I was kind of getting bored with it and we really didn't need another like queen or king size blanket. So I thought, you know what, I'll make this like a single person blanket, just something one person can use while sitting on the couch or two people could drape it over their laps. Like Michael and I could drape it over our two laps and stay warm and cozy on the couch. Um, so I went with that and I'm really happy with it. So uh, let me put in a picture here of the seven blankets that I finished this year. Again, six of those are baby blankets and the adult size blanket has the squares. Um, yeah, I'm super happy with <laughs> With that, I didn't realize I'd finished so many blankets until I went through Ravelry and counted them, and I was like, seven, I thought maybe three or four, but yeah, seven. That's cool. Um, next are stuffies. So stuffies are what I call objects you knit and then stuff with some kind of filling, right? So uh, this year uh, in 2021, <laughs> I guess last year technically now um, I finished five stuffies so three of those were gnomes one of them was a pumpkin and one of them was um, a dozen Easter eggs so <laughs> yeah I'm pretty happy with that so let me put in another picture here of the five stuffies that I finished this year um, two of the gnomes were Christmas gifts, so, uh, and then one of the gnomes, uh, was one I created this past December during Advent, so, super fun, I love it. <laughs> uh, next I have, um, headpieces, so hats, headbands, things you wear in your head. Um, I finished three of those this year. They were all headbands and they were all my crisscross headband pattern, which by the way is available for free on Ravelry. Um, <laughs> uh, so I made three of those uh, and all three of those were gifts, um, either birthday gifts or Christmas gifts. So all of those have been 
gifted at this point. Um, I did also finish three neck accessories, so either a shawl or a scarf. Um, I don't have pictures of those. For some reason, I did not really take finished object photos of those things. Why? I'm not sure, but <laughs> I did finish uh, one shawl, which was out of some hand spun yarn, and two scarves. One scarf was out of hand spun, and the other scarf was the weaving project during Advent. And I don't have finished object photos. Okay, something to work on. Uh, and then the last item on the list is one sweater. So I only finished one sweater this year. I have had a sweater on hold in a bag this whole year and I never took it out and worked on it. Yeah. So uh, I finished one sweater. <laughs> <laughs> but that makes my 31 projects that used up yarn out of my stash, which is pretty awesome. And then for projects that added yarn to my stash, so my spinning, I finished five spinning projects in 2021. Uh, one of them was, uh, I think, a carryover from 2020 but I finished it this this past year. Um, so of my five spinning projects, I added roughly a thousand yards to my stash. Now, one of the five spinning projects, I did not count the yardage. Um, and that's the Sleeping Beauty spin that I knit socks out of. So that yardage uh, was not counted twice. So it wasn't counted as spinning and I also couldn't count it in the socks. So <laughs> why I didn't count the yardage, actually I think I know why I didn't count the yardage because I was so excited to cast on those socks. I just didn't count the yardage and I just, as soon as I finished spinning it, washed it, dried it, I I um, wound it up into a ball and cast on, and I totally forgot to even count the yardage, which is silly, so, so I need to be better about that. Actually count your yardage, because it would have counted for spinning and those socks. Anyway, yeah, so roughly a thousand yards is what I tracked out of the other four projects. Uh, and I'll put in a picture here of those spinning projects. Um, like I said, one of those um, was knit up into socks. Another one was knit up into the pumpkin stuffy. And another one is uh, currently in use for a pair of socks that I have half finished. Uh, but yeah, one of those I have cast on from socks and I'm currently working on it. So, so yeah. Compare that to the previous year in 2020, uh, there it is. In 2020, I added 2,000 yards to my stash through spinning. So I did half as much spinning in 2021. Uh, one of those spins was this Coopworth that I'm wearing <laughs> that got knit up into this cardigan. Uh, and the other spin was my color study with the Shetland. That was in 2020. So, yeah. Uh, this past year in 2021, I didn't spin uh, for necessarily a project in mind. Um, and that's something I'm going to go back to here in 2022. So, yeah, those are my... Um, those are my uh, statistics, my stats, right, on how well I did this year. I'm pretty happy with it, considering, um, you know, it's still pandemic, it's life is weird, things keep changing, opening, closing, 
Um, I haven't gone to, I think I went to one fiber event and it was really small and low key because of the pandemic. Um, but you know, I, I miss going to fiber events and, you know, being inspired and meeting people and sharing ideas and items, bringing home things from the market. Um, I really miss that. And I hope that I can get back to that here someday soon. Um, one of the appeals of moving to Washington State is that this is uh, a place with lots of fiber festivals and, and sheep farms nearby. And I feel like I haven't really been able to enjoy any of that since moving here. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. It's something I have no control over because I don't decide whether or not these events run. But if there are opportunities for me to go, I am going to jump on them this year. That is for sure. So, um, let's transition into future goals and ideas for 2022. So for 2022, I am thinking um, my goal is going to be to have fun. So I've been <laughs> just, I'm just going to keep it simple. So I, I feel like during these times of pandemic and teaching online and like I said, not being able to go to fiber events, like I feel pressure, like stress and pressure. And so I don't want to put stress and pressure on myself. So with my crafting, I want to have fun. Now, one of the things that I'm really enjoying right now is um, kind of back mapping with my projects. So think about what I want is an end result. Like what's this item I want to add to my wardrobe, for example, and kind of back map how I would get there. So instead of going um, forward mapping, like, oh, I love this yarn, I buy it and then figure out what to make out of it. How about think about what I want to make and then go backwards. So I've been enjoying trying out that process. And so I want to do some more of that. Um, I also, uh, I guess one goal I really do want to put on myself <laughs> is to work through the wool that I have purchased. So I have um, Shetland, Carrie Hill, Jacob, um, some, I think Merino BFL, something like that. Or I have another a fifth one like I need to work through that wool so one of the things I definitely want to do in 2022 is work through that wool now because I need to wash it prep it you know do all that before I can spin it um, it's a slower process so I'm not gonna put any yardage expectations on myself but I would like to get it all washed and I'd like to begin processing them. So yeah, that is something I'd like to do. Now I do have a um, some items I wrote down that I, I wanna make this year and mostly they're uh, requests from family members. So my dad has put in a request for a scarf. So I do wanna make that. My mom has put in a request for a hat. So I wanna do that. Um, I have wrote down some things that I want to make, like some some garments, so I want to get to those. Um, I have some patterns I want to release this year, so I want to do that. Um, and here on the channel, I want to make um, some new videos, so <laughs> not just uh, the monthly updates, but also kind of taking you through crafting items. So with this back mapping idea, I'd like to you know, take you on that journey with me uh, through videos. So kind of talking through the item I want to make and 
and the whole planning and, and making process. So, so those are things that I would like to work on in 2022. So the only thing left to do is to go through my whips, my works in progress, which I have stacked up behind me here. So what I'm going to do is flip the camera around and what we're going to do is go through these bags to figure out what I have in the works. Uh, some of these are really old works in progress that I'm a little bit ashamed about. But I mean, what is the point of having these bags just sitting around with something in them that I never work on? So I either need to decide to make it or scrap it. So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through these bags and see what's going to get ripped out and what's going to get finished. So these are my project bags that have stuff in them. Um, these two are open. These are active works in progress that I'm actively working on. So these are the um, hand spun socks that I have half finished. So these are definitely going to get finished. Um, in here is my mellow sweater that I'm working on. Um, this is one of my back mapping projects. <laughs> um, I'm definitely actively working on this, so this is going to get finished. <laughs> um, so this is good. So these are definitely going to get finished. Um, but in here are... I, I don't know. Let, let's find out. <laughs> That's kind of the point of this. Um, so... I already know what's in here. This is a sweater that I cast on in, I don't know, March 2020, February 2020, 2019. I don't even know. No, it wasn't 2019. I think it was early pandemic when I cast this on. So this pattern is um, dark water. It's a colorwork sweater. And yeah, I have no idea where I am in this pattern. Um, but I'm using what's in here? Cloudborn, Highland Fingering in Stormy Skies, and Gray Heather. And this is definitely something I want in my wardrobe. Like, I definitely know that I want this. It's just a matter of, of at this point, um, figuring out where I am in this pattern. So I'm going to have to get on, I think I was tracking it on my tablet. So I'm going to have to get on my tablet and try and figure this out. Um, hopefully I made some notes. I really don't want to have to rip this out and start over because this is good progress. But... Um, yeah, so I would like to, um, after I finish Mellow, I would like to pick this back up. That would be really nice. So, yes, I do want to finish this. Okay. Um, let's see, what's in here? I love this bag with the little animals on it. I think it's so cute. Um, oh yes, my moon mittens that are definitely not finished. See, oh gosh, I feel like I can't do, look at this, it's caught in my ring. Oh shoot, how do I get this off here? There we go. See, I feel like I can't do... I can't wear color work mittens with my ring. See, it just gets stuck around there. So I'd have to stop wearing my engagement ring. Like, just wear my wedding ring. Anyway. Um. Yeah, I'm just not inspired to knit color work mittens. These are super warm though, like, my hand is warm in here. 
And I do think it looks really cool. This is a design I was working on when we lived in Texas. Uh, and it's just been sitting here, the one mitten. I don't even have, I don't have a second one. I didn't even finish this with the thumb. I mean, I could finish it. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? This was a pattern I was working on that I was going to release, and I just never got around to it, apparently. Is this something you'd be interested in? These moon mittens? Should I power through and finish them? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I'm going to put this in undecided. <sighs> undecided. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see what's in here. Oh, this is just yarn I need to put away. These are the yarns I used in my gnome for uh, for Advent, for December. Yep, I just need to put this away. Okay, so let's take that yarn out of there. And the needle that's left, and now I have an empty bag. Cool. All right, let me set this aside. Right. Undecided empty bag. What's in here? I bet this is spinning. Yes, this is fiber that I'm uh, spinning on my Turkish drop spindle. So this is going to get finished. Yes. Okay. Halloween bag. Okay. Yeah, this is um, a brioche hat. It's, I think it's a free pattern that I got off of Ravelry. Um, I can't remember the name. Uh, but I need to rip this out and start over because my, um, my gauge is off. Like, this is too big. This is too big. It's not... Um, it's not in any it's, it's just too loose it's too big so I just need to rip this out and start over or rip out and <laughs> not start over I don't know but this needs to get ripped out because it's not it's not gonna work the way it is so rip it out okay and here I've been storing my shawl pins here so these need to go somewhere else and not in a bag. Oh yeah. These are colorwork socks that I was designing. Uh, again, more than two years old. Uh, and I was doing these toe up and the top is so loose. I just can't do a good bind off <laughs> uh, on Ribbing is just way too loose. Yeah. Um. I could finish this design. Like, for the design. But I don't like how loose this is. I will not wear these socks. Because this is not going to keep my sock up at all. Look, I even took the needles out of this second one. So, I mean, yeah, I could rip out that second sock, knit it cuff down, because that's how I prefer it. I'd have to redo this one, too, if I was going to actually wear this pair of socks. I like the pattern. I think it looks really cool. All right, I, I'm gonna rip these out and I'm gonna redo them. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rip these out and I'm gonna redo them. So that goes over there. All right. And then 
What do we got here? Oh my gosh, is there anything in here? <laughs> oh yeah. That's it. Okay. I started <laughs> another crisscross headband just to have something super plain to knit on. I don't know, maybe we we're going to the movies or something. But I changed my mind. Look, I ripped the needle out. So I can just finish ripping this out. Um Well, that's right. I was debating on doing like a two-color one. Like striping it. Okay. Well, that one's easy. That's ripped out in empty bag. Cool. More yarn. So I do think it'd be really cool if I started the new year with as few works in progress as possible. Uh, but also, does that really matter? I don't know. Uh, but at least we were able to empty two bags of, well, a project that was finished that I just forgot to take out of the bag and a project I had started and didn't like. So there's two bags freed up right there, which is awesome. I've got four bags over here of works in progress that I definitely plan to finish. So my goal for 2022 is to finish those four to not let them carry over to another year so i need to keep these four out so that i look at them and work on them um these two are designs that i lost interest in uh because the socks didn't fit like because the the top ribbing is so loose and I don't like that um, so I kind of lost interest <laughs> and then the mittens I think because we were in the process of moving like to Washington so I just forgot about them and then continued to forget about them so these are designs that I could revisit And for, I just can't make a decision <laughs> right now. So I'm gonna give myself until the end of January to decide what to do about these. Am I gonna completely abandon them or am I gonna find a way to finish them? Yeah, so these two are kind of undecided. And then the brioche hat, uh, like I said, it's too, my gauge is off, it's too big. So I just need to rip out and start over. So. I would like a brioche hat. I think it would be nice. So I'm going to put this over here in the I want to finish, but it needs to be ripped out first. So I'll probably rip that out today, actually. Um, I need to write down how many stitches I cast on so that I know to cast on less. So that's what I need to do with that. But OK, so one, two, three, four, five. So five. Um, works in progress I'm carrying over that I want to finish in 2022. So let's see if I do that. <laughs> and then two things that um, were meant to be designs that I lost interest in that I need to decide. Am I going to finish them or am I going to abandon them? Don't know. But that's pretty good. I mean, it's not like I have 45 bags here with stuff in them. I only have seven, eight, nine. Two of them are empty now, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Thanks for joining me in my 2021 wrap up video. Um, I look forward to another year of crafting and creating and enjoying the process of. Um, 
don't forget to check out the December makes video uh, because at the end of the video I announce a giveaway so you can win a prize. But you have to go watch that video and comment on that video and then I'm going to announce the giveaway winner at the end of January, the end of this month, January 2022. So go check that out if you haven't already. Um, enter to win. Uh, all you have to do is be a person in the world mm -hmm. and a subscriber of the channel. That's all you have to do. Oh, and comment on that video. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's all I have for you in this episode. Um, like I said, you can look forward to some more... Um, crafting process videos here on the channel. I hope you find that interesting, uh, informative, um, enjoyable, because I do. Uh, anyway, Happy New Year and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. So be safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your crafts whatever they may be. Bye!